Another way to uh, augment thrust is to use uh, an afterburner, or sometimes it's known as uh, reheat. And this can be, again, useful for when there are issues uh, with temperature. You know, if the outside air temperature is, is warm, and uh, that will lead to reduction in air density, which re creates a reduction in the mass flow, and that will give us a reduction in thrust. So it can be used uh, for that, or in, in military applications, you know, it's used when you need to, um, you know, maybe climb very fast or, or perhaps on takeoff. Okay, so the whole principle of, of reheat is based on um, the ramjet effectively. So uh, this is a ramjet. So I want you to, you know, imagine an aircraft traveling at Mach uh, 4. So the Mach number is equal to 4. And this is the uh, stagnation pressure formula. Okay, so it's saying that the pressure P2, so just say here, the pressure here at P2 is the atmospheric pressure times 1 plus the efficiency of the duct, so the duct here, times gamma minus 1 all over 2 times the Mach number squared to the power of gamma all over gamma minus 1. So I've just taken an example here. Uh, I've assumed an efficiency of 95%. And uh, we've assumed the Mach number is 4. And when I put all those values in, I get a value of 132. So the pressure at this point is 132 times what it is out here at, at atmospheric. And with that type of pressure ratio, you don't need a compressor. And if you don't need a compressor, you don't need a turbine. So no compressor, no turbine. So the air is in, it's compressed. Uh, it is all the velocity has been taken out of it effectively because of this high pressure. Um, all we do then is put the fuel injectors here. We uh, inject fuel, ignite it. The air gets some extra energy and then accelerates out the back. So that is the the principle of a of a ramjet, and we can apply that then to the afterburner. So effectively, with an afterburner, we have a ramjet, this is the ramjet here, you know, added on to the end of the, the gas turbine engine. So when the air comes through, it gets compressed, it gets burned, but only a small amount of it gets burned in here. You know, maybe 80% of it is used for uh, cooling. So the air coming out through the turbines here is still rich in oxygen content and it's warm. And it's at at a, at a high pressure, so you know the the air has been compressed. It is expanded slightly here with the with the turbines, but um, not enough to 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 go back to at atmospheric pressure. So it it still has a, it has still has some pressure. So the velocity, you know, it hasn't hit the the, the nozzle yet. So the velocity is still relatively low. So if we take that air then into the um, afterburner, uh, if we add fuel and uh, ignite it, then the air has more energy and we'll get a lot more jet velocity out the back. So, so much so that we can uh, increase the, the amount of thrust by 50%, but it comes at a price. Um, our fuel flow will increase by 100%. Um, and that's because, you know, if, if we're only, if we're only burning 20% of the air here, you know, we're going to burn the rest of it in here. So there's a lot more to, lot more to be burned. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's the afterburner. So if we look at that on a graph, we can see, you know, if this was the, the flat rated value of the engine, um, you know, we, we get this amount of thrust up to about, about 30 degrees. But if we have the afterburner uh, added, you know we can we can increase our thrust by up to up to 150 uh, percent. So um, yeah, it's uh, very useful, but it's it's very um, fuel inefficient, and it's 
mostly used in military applications.